Today, we are taking a look at a 3D case design for the Lenovo M720Q Tiny to solve the lack of ventilation in the original top cover. I've designed a 3D case with full ventilation on the top cover. It can be installed the same way as the original case and supports the slide to remove feature, just like the original case. The main concept of this design is not to permanently replace the original cover. Instead, the case should be interchangeable, allowing you to install the ventilation case while gaming and switch back to the original cover whenever you want. In this video, I'll cover how to print my 3D case file and demonstrate this tiny PC's performance with the new case. We'll conduct CPU and GPU stress tests on Windows 11 and test gameplay on Bazite OS. I'll also show you how I managed to fix CPU throttling on Bazite OS. So stick around. Now, let's preview my 3D case design. I've designed the case in two parts, the front bezel and the top cover. I've maintained the same size as the original case, which is 35 millimeters thick and provided full ventilation on the top cover to help the PC run cooler under heavy load or while gaming. This time I've designed the ventilation in a simple circular pattern and the front bezel resembles the Lenovo P series. Now let me show you the slicing settings I used to print this case. For the object orientation, I set the top cover upside down, flat to the build plate, as shown in this video. I use Creality Print 5.1 and a Creality Ender 3 V3 Plus 3D printer. So the slicing settings parameters like print speed and layer height might differ from yours or other 3D printers from different brands. Make sure to check your 3D printer user guide for more help. Now let's take a look at the main values I set for this print. I recommend setting the print infill to 100% for better strength in the printed case. Make sure you enable support to print this 3D model file. Be aware that some 3D printers might print the object with very high adhesion, making it difficult to remove the support. You can adjust the support strength to make it easier to remove. You should disable the brim feature, as it may result in a less clean finish for the printed case. This is because it's often challenging to completely remove the brim from the printed case. For other parameters, like print temperature and speed, please follow the default presets of your 3D printer for the specific material you are using. I would also recommend printing at the smallest layer height to achieve a smoother result. Here is the printed case. The first layer that's stuck to the build plate looks very smooth, but the front bezel seems a bit less so. However, the overall print quality is good. I used PETG filament to print this case. It may not be the best, but it can withstand temperatures up to 80 degrees Celsius. If you have a 3D printer with a chamber enclosure, you should use ABS or ASA filaments, as these materials can withstand higher temperatures up to 100 degrees Celsius before starting to soften or deform. Now let's upgrade this PC to improve its performance for gaming and daily tasks. I have a Dell AMD Radeon RX 6500 GPU installed on this PC. Now I'm going to upgrade it by replacing the Intel Core i7-8700T CPU and adding more RAM and an SSD. This PC comes with eight gigabytes of RAM at 2666 megahertz. I could add another eight gigabytes to enable dual channel mode. But since I don't have another pair of DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM, I'll replace the RAM with two by eight gigabytes DDR4 3200 megahertz instead. Now let's replace the 256 gigabyte SSD with a one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD. I have two M.2 SSDs with one terabyte each, one with Windows 11 preloaded, and one with Bazite OS installed. In this video, I'll show the PC running with both operating systems. I'll perform GPU and CPU stress tests on Windows OS, as I can't find software to do so on Linux and demonstrate the gameplay performance on Bazite OS. Now let's upgrade the CPU. 
Here I have an Intel Core i7-8700T with 6 cores and 12 threads. This CPU should significantly improve the PC's performance compared to the old Intel Core i5-8500T that came with this PC. All right, now that the CPU has been successfully upgraded, let's reinstall the CPU cooler and then reinstall the GPU. Now I have a very small desktop PC with an Intel Core i7 CPU and a dedicated GPU. It looks so neat thanks to Lenovo for such a great PC design. I designed three screw holes to secure the 3D case with the chassis. One in the middle needs to embed a female threaded insert nut but I didn't use it in this setup since the two screws on the sides should be enough. All right, now that I have successfully set up this one liter gaming PC with a new 3D case design, let's take a look at the final project overview. Now let's perform the CPU stress test. My 3D case should improve the airflow. However, the CPU fan noise remains the same as the original setup and can still be quite loud. If you'd like to fix this fan noise, please check out my other video where I demonstrate how to install a 140 millimeter fan on this PC. And here we have the AMD Radeon RX 6500 installed on this PC. The GPU is running at PCIe 3.0x4, the same as the RX 6400. Now let's perform the GPU stress test. You can hear the PC fan noise clearly as I've placed the microphone right next to the PC.
Now, let's do some gaming benchmarks with this PC setup. And here's the 3D Mark Time Spy score. Now, let's switch the OS to Bazite OS and test some gameplay. I want to showcase the gaming performance with this PC setup through this video because many people are curious about how Linux gaming performs on low-end PC setups. So, let's try it now. Now I'm replacing the Windows OS drive and installing the Bazite OS drive instead. Now, let's turn on the PC and boot to Bazite OS. As you already know, this PC will experience CPU throttling when a GPU is installed. Here's the gaming performance with the CPU throttled power limit. It can only achieve around 40 FPS with Doom Eternal on medium graphics settings. Now, I'll show you how I managed to fix the CPU power limit on Bazite OS. Please follow along with the on-screen CMD command line to install the software and configure the settings. All right, now let's check if the CPU power limit is off. Let's try Doom Eternal again with the same settings as before. You can see on the graph in the upper left-hand corner that the FPS jumps from around 40 FPS to 100 FPS, which is great. It's unbelievable that a $120 PC and a $99 GPU can run a game so smoothly. Now let's try God of War with the original graphics preset. With the CPU power limit fixed, this PC setup can achieve gameplay with God of War at 1080p original graphics preset around 65 FPS, which is the same as running on Windows in my previous video. And please take a look at the PC size. It is so small. Now let's try Stray at 1080p medium graphics settings. Since I don't have many games installed on this Bazite OS drive, let's take a look at how this PC performs in the game stray. Compared to my last video gameplay testing with this game, it was around 70 to 80 FPS only. With the CPU upgraded to the Core i7-8700T, the gameplay performance has boosted up to over 100 FPS with the same graphic settings as in my previous test. Now let's try Resident Evil 4 Remake at 1080p with performance mode graphics settings. In conclusion, after upgrading the CPU to the Intel Core i7-8700T and adding the AMD Radeon RX 6500 GPU, the overall performance of this one liter gaming PC has significantly improved. The new 3D case design enhanced airflow although the CPU fan noise remained the same. Fixing the CPU power limit allowed for impressive performance boosts. Despite CPU throttling when the GPU is installed, adjustments were made to alleviate this issue. For example, Doom Eternal saw an increase from 40 FPS to 100 FPS on medium graphics settings, and God of War achieved 65 FPS at 1080p original graphics preset matching Windows performance. The game Stray also experienced a performance boost from 70 to 80 FPS to over 100 FPS with the upgraded CPU. This setup demonstrates that a compact, budget-friendly PC 
with a one liter PC and a $99 GPU can deliver smooth and enjoyable gaming experiences. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more content. Your support means a lot.